Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but I'm gonna talk about Dungeons and Dragons again and talk about how if Hasbro can't make money off of D&D uh, &D as a tabletop game, they can probably make money off of it as a lifestyle brand, or at least that's what they're attempting to do, to turn D&D &D into a lifestyle brand. And we saw this happen with catastrophic consequences, I believe, to Marvel and Star Wars that Disney took what was historically kind of a, a nerd line and they tried to make it for, uh, you know, bored housewives and, you know, uh, childless aunts, wine aunts. And, and it's just, you know what I'm saying? It's like it just it didn't really mesh with the demographic. And now we've got D&D uh, &D dresses and D&D &D shoes and and uh D, D legos and it's yeah they're they're completely pimping out the property to make as much money off of it as they can in merchandise and i think a lot of people are enamored with the idea of D, &D. they like the idea of D, D, but it's not really the game itself that they like they just like the uh, fantasy imagery and they they like stranger things you know but they're not really uh, gamers. So let's uh, let's talk about this. Before you get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, this is actually coming from Bleeding Cool, which is weird, but yeah, it's coming from Bleeding Cool. That uh, D and D is partnering with Black Milk for a new apparel line. <laughs> you know, they got their shirts, their little little shorty shorts. Or let's let's take a look at this here. Their D and D. Booty shorts, Death Knight. Oh, that's so cool. Look, oh, it's got the ampersand in there. Look at that. And the dice, because, you know, yeah, even people that don't play D&D &D know it's all about the, all about the dice, right? Um, the lineup they have is pretty awesome with a good chunk of the collection aimed at women and non-binary players. Get that. That doesn't say d and This is a displacer. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, it's for cosplayers. Multiple items in the collection have already sold out. Wow, with others appearing to be in limited supply, showing the apparel line to be a success for the company. We'll see if this opens the doors for more down the line. So here are some of the other uh, the other apparel items. Okay, that's actually a pretty cool design. But uh, yes, for women and non-binary players, you can dress. Uh, that looks like the Haunted Mansion. I guess. I guess if you can do the Haunted Mansion, you can do D and D. But yeah, we've got the twenty sided dice with all the with all the uh, monsters that they actually own. I guess got like bugbears, I think. And yeah, there we go. And the ampersand. So yeah, there you go, guys. You can dress like Dungeons and Dragons. But it doesn't stop there. They've also got D and D Converse. So D and D's for for hipsters now. This is uh, this is a couple days ago. The Gamer, Dungeons & Dragons, see, The Gamer would totally like this. Dungeons & Dragons Converse Crossover Collection is available now. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so Dungeons & Dragons turns 50 this year. Uh, they're going to talk about the Lego set, which we'll talk about the Lego set. We'll talk about that. The D&D &D Black Milk Collection and now Converse. The Promise Collection, which includes D&D &D options being added to Converse by you, is available now, letting you flaunt your love for the world's most famous RPG through Chuck Taylor All-Stars and other items. That is some hipster shit. The Chuck Taylor All-Star Adult Options are the collection's headliners, available in two new limited edition designs, one of which is black and red with the D&D &D ampersand on the side, and the other looks more like the classic black and white all-stars with splashes of green and iconic characters from the RPG's history dotted around them. There are also different all-star designs in little kids' and toddlers' sizes, so you can pretend like you play D&D, &D, right? Uh, there are other designs for adults. One is a more subtle gray. More subtle gray. Let's look at this. That's... How is that D&D? &D? Oh, it's got the ampersand on it, so it's D&D. &D. Okay. This one has a gelatinous cube on the chest, the shirt. Okay. Um, 2024 has been a big year for people on the lookout for theme sneakers. Squishmallows teamed up with Puma, and they did some one-piece sneakers. I mean, look, this isn't out of the ordinary. Like, nerd brands do this, but it's also kind of like... 
when we get to when we get to the sneaker and dress stage, it's no longer cool. I mean, D and D hasn't. I don't think D and D's ever been cool. But you know what I'm saying? Like we 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 are at the point right now where normies are going to wear D and D stuff to look like they're nerds, but they're actually not. Just like Marvel and Star Wars, and then it stopped being cool, and all this stuff wound up at Ollie's. We don't want D and D to wind up at Ollie's. Oh wait, it already is. There's like tons of D and D stuff at Ollie's. It's just a lifestyle brand, guys. I'm going to pull up this uh, Reddit post in a little bit, but let's look at the uh, the Lego set, which is actually pretty cool. Lego set's not bad. Yeah, I kind of like that. We got Beholder here. We got an uh, Owlbear. We got uh, Displacer. Yeah, that's not bad. These are basically of the monsters that they actually own, that Watsy actually owns. But, uh, yeah, that's not, that's not bad. And there's Palpatine. No, <laughs> <laughs> is it supposed to be a drow? Is that what that is? I don't know. It's not It's not terrible. I mean, that's not terrible. At least it looks... I'm getting D&D from this one, right? But um, anyway, let's talk about this post. Because this was, this was posted two years ago. And they talk about how 5e was becoming a lifestyle brand. And, and you know, everybody's kind of seen it. They had cookbooks and they had kids books and they had, you know what I'm saying? Like we never would have seen this stuff back in the day. Is D&D a lifestyle brand? Is it becoming one or has it always been? If so, is that a bad thing? Uh, this person said a complaint I've seen made by grognards more lately is that Watsy is cultivating D&D as a lifestyle brand. Well, I'm making that complaint again because this is very obvious now when they're selling dresses and shoes. And they probably have purses too. I bet if you look into it, they probably have purses. It's like Disney. They've Disneyfied D&D. Uh, where consumers are meant to make the brand part of their identity by buying lots of merchandise. They're talking about Harley Davidson. Well, it's not a dress, right? I would, I would buy a D&D Harley. I wouldn't buy, well, I wouldn't buy a D&D dress, but, you know, if, if it makes you happy, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's a nice bike. I only ride Harleys, they say, from under their Harley Davidson hat, taking off their Harley Davidson sunglasses to clean them up. Yeah, Harley Davidson shirt. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. A D&D enthusiast might say, yeah, other games are fun, but I only play D&D. They're standing on their D20-shaped rug, D20 earrings, glinting in the light as their arms cross over their D&D shirt. I have no doubt this kind of brand loyalty is something Watsy loves to foster. And this is, this is the problem, though. When, when you are blindly loyal to a company, and this is before the OGL debacle. This is before the Pinkertons. You know what I'm saying? So when you're blindly loyal to a company, it is not going to be reciprocated. You know this, right? They're not going to love you back. So you might have brand loyalty to Dungeons and Dragons, but Wizards, you're just a mark, man. You're just, you know, you're just buying their stuff. Uh, this is a new thing. D&D has been the, the name brand of role playing since the 70s. It's just more noticeable now that more people have gotten into it. Well, again, Harley Davidson to me, if they have a, a D and D Harley, uh, that's a little bit different than shoes and dresses and purses. There's no guarantee that without the nerd lifestyle cred of D and D, many of these people would have ever tried other games instead. So this is really a bad thing for the hobby. This person says the thing is all you need to play D and D or any other. TTRPG is a rule book, pencils, paper, dice, imagination, lifestyle brand, plushies, apparel, pillows, mugs, shows, movies, etc. Dresses and shoes, shoes and dresses is what happens when a multinational corporation takes over something popular. Yes, thank you. Encrusted goblet. They milk it. Hasbro views D&D as a profit center. They don't really care if D&D stays a game or becomes something else. That is true. They refer to D&D as IP. It's just, it's part of their brand portfolio. This is how Chris Cox describes it. And he said already that they've got 50 years of, of content that they can, they can juice, you know, and if they never printed another edition of D&D ever, if they were selling so much D&D merch, right, you know, toys and, and the toys aren't selling, the toys are on clearance always, but you know what I'm saying, dresses and shoes and crap like that, and it never is a tabletop game again, they're totally fine with that. They're completely fine with that. They laid a whole bunch of people off at Wizards that worked on D&D. They don't care. They don't care as long as they're making money off of the brand that they own. They're making money off of Dipla you know, Displacer Beasts, and they're making money off of uh, Owlbearers, and they're making money off of whatever stuff that they actually own with D&D. Those, those kind of trademarked uh, beasts 
that are exclusive to D&D and the characters and the races and stuff like that. Oh, we can't say races now. I'm sorry. But you know what I'm saying? They don't care. They don't care. They're making money. They're 100% right. They don't care if it's a game system or it becomes something else. In fact, they'd rather it become something really big than stay a game. Exactly. They've said that. They want it to be a mobile app or something or a lifestyle brand, a movie franchise, whatever. This happened in the past many times. Profit becomes a central concern, so the initial thing that made the brand popular wilts. Harley Davidson is a great example because I hear their bikes are not as good as they used to be. Indians were always better. Just saying. I view it as a bad thing. The game will suffer because it's only just one facet of the profit. Why hire writers and artists and allow them to be creative when you could just license IP to some other maker of trinkets? Thank you. This was two years ago. This was two years ago before the AI controversy. Before them licensing out stuff, before them uh, saying that they want to pivot to video games, you know, before them saying they want to pivot to mobile games, before they laid a whole bunch of people off at, at Wizards. It's just IP. That's all it is. It's like a board game brand. If they could get away with just print Monopoly on a t-shirt and not having to, you know, actually sell Monopoly board games, they probably would do it. You know, I can't think of any example where becoming a lifestyle brand worked out well for the original product. No, it's not cool anymore. There are many examples of where it caused the original product to suffer. Yes, see Marvel, see Star Wars. This is exactly what's happening. This is exactly what is happening right now. Magic the Gathering, it's the same thing. They're just, you know, bringing all kinds of IP into Magic the Gathering. You know, Doctor Who and Transformers and like, what the hell? It's just... That's all it is to Hasbro. They don't care. You know, they don't care about D&D. Just like Disney doesn't really care about, you know, Marvel or Star Wars other than making money off of it. But I can actually argue, I think I could argue pretty successfully that Disney actually cares more about Marvel and Star Wars than Hasbro cares about Dungeons and Dragons. You know, the guy that's running Hasbro right now is he's just a bean counter from Microsoft. He, he's he's going to get in, try to juice the IP for as much as he can, and he's going to get out and he's going to move on to something else. And I think before it's all said and done, I've, I've talked about this before, I think Hasbro will eventually license out more and more of its toys, and they might be out of the toy business almost entirely within a few years. Like th It seems like they keep kicking things over to other companies like you know Super 7 and Basic Fun and, and Lego. Like I mean, if you own the the brand and you view yourself as just like a video game company or like a movie studio or something, you know what I'm saying? Like I can completely, totally see them just saying, you know what? We're out of the toy business. We're out of the tabletop game business. You know, Monopoly Go made a lot more money than the Monopoly board game. So let's just make shitty mobile apps and just license it out. People buy more D and D shoes and dresses and pumps and purses and earrings. than they do the game. Why are we making a game anymore? It's just fat, stinky nerds that want the game. And they're just so non-progressive. We got to make, make dresses for our, uh, uh, female and non-binary players. Because that's where the money's at. And they might be right. I mean, that's a scary thing. They might be right. They might be making more money off of this than they are every time they sell a, sell a book. I have no idea. Um, and if they are, that, expect more of this. That's 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 this is what happens. This is what happens. Same thing happened with Marvel. Same thing happened with Star Wars. It is no longer cool when you're turning D and D into uh, look at that Raven Ravenloft on the back of a kimono. Is that what I'm looking at? Is that what I'm looking at? How does that? At least it wasn't Oriental Adventures. But you know what I'm saying? Like this just is, yeah. Yeah, it's over, man. It's game over. d and is a lifestyle brand. That's what it is. Uh, you know, actual gamers are moving on. I'd say they're moving on to Warhammer, but there's a lot of controversy around that right now, too. So I think Pathfinder, maybe. Homebrew, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.